When we talk about the solution to a system, a solution to an equation, if I'm just looking at x plus y is equal to 4, the solution to that equation is any ordered pair that makes that equation true. So I might use like 2, 2, or 1, 3, or 3, 1. Any of those would be a solution to that equation. But if I want a solution to the system, then that means I have to find the ordered pair that makes both of those equations true. So even though 2, 2 might work up here, it does not work down here. It wouldn't be a solution to that system. So that's what we're looking for when we're talking about solving. So let's start with systems of two linear equations with two unknowns. Right? If I have two equations that are both linear, they're going to graph as lines, there are only a certain number of ways you can draw two lines, right? You could draw them so that they're parallel. You could draw them so that they intersect. Maybe they're perpendicular and intersect at a 90 degree angle. Maybe they're not, but they're intersecting. Or they're overlapping, and that just means one line laying on top of the other one. Those are the only three ways that we can draw two lines. The key for us is going to be right here. Solution equals intersection. Here's the thought behind that. Let's say that we're looking at these intersecting lines right here. Every single point on this first line, every single point is a solution for that line. If we're back down here talking about x plus y is equal to 4, you know, we might be sitting here plotting 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, and then drawing a line to connect those dots. So if it is on that line, it is a solution for that equation. So then if I were to go back and graph x minus y is equal to 2, every single point on this line would be a solution for that equation. So if I'm looking for the one solution that works in both equations, it's got to be this one little point right here because that's the only one that is on both of those lines. So my solution to the system would be the intersection of the two lines. And so again, that's our key, solution equals intersection. So for parallel lines, because they never intersect, then they have no solution. The intersecting lines intersected in one spot, so they would have one solution. And overlapping lines um, have infinitely many intersections. Like you can see, there's an intersection here and here and here and here and here and here and here, and it's going to keep going to infinity. So they have infinitely many intersections. That means they have infinitely many solutions. Now, infinitely many solutions and all real numbers are not the same thing. And um, students sometimes get that confused on the test. The reason why you can't say all real numbers instead of infinitely many solutions is, yes, there are an infinite number of points on this line that are going to work in both of those equations. But that doesn't mean that a point over here off of those lines is going to work. And so if I say all real numbers, I'm saying everything on the face of the earth is going to work. This point over here is not going to work. So it would have to be a point on those lines. So yes, there are an infinite number of them, but it, the difference there being um, infinitely many solutions not the same thing as all real numbers. Okay, so let's look at example one. Example one, we have two linear equations, and we said today that we wanted to solve by both substitution and graphing. So let's take example number one, a system of two linear equations uh, with two unknowns, and let's solve it by substitution and by graphing. All right, let's start with substitution. You might remember that with substitution, you're going to solve one of your equations for one of your unknowns. It does not matter which one. In a subsequent example that we're going to look at, I'll point out to you that a lot of times you can work smarter and not harder by the way that you choose the variable that you solve for. But in this case, it pretty much you know doesn't matter if I choose the first equation or the second because they're equal in difficulty. And it doesn't really matter if I choose x or y. So I chose the first equation and I solved for y, but you could have chosen the second equation and solved for y, or you could have chosen either of them and solved for x. The reason this is called substitution is I'm going to take what I just got for y, 4 minus x, and I'm going to substitute it in the place of y in the other equation. Why do I have to do that? I can't solve for x and y at the same time. But if I replace y with what is equal to 4 minus x, now everything's in terms of x. Now that I can solve. So we can go through and distribute that negative. So we'll have negative 4 and a positive x. Combine our two x's. 
add our 4 to the other side, and then divide by 2. So we'll get x is equal to 3. All right, once you know x, how do you find y? You just plug x back into the yeah, I'm going to plug x back into my equation. Now, which one? I can put it back into the original first equation, the original second equation, or the altered first equation over here. That altered first equation would probably be easiest because I've already solved it for y. And so I could just put 3 in the place of x, and I've got y is equal to 1. So there's my solution, 3, 1, my ordered pair. Now, on the homework on a lot of these, they're going to tell you solve it algebraically and check it by graphing, or solve it by graphing and check it algebraically. So we want to be able to do it both ways. So let's take this exact same system, and this time let's solve it by graphing. All right? You can graph these however you want to. Uh, I'm going to make an XY chart. So I took the first equation, x plus y equals 4. I'm going to put 0 in for x. So if my x is gone, then y is 4. And then I put 0 in for y. So if my y is gone, it's like you can put your finger over top of that, and you'll get x is equal to 4. So I plotted 0, 4, and 4, 0, and drew my line. If you'd rather use slope-intercept, whatever you want to do. All right, second equation, same idea. I'm going to go through, and again, I used an xy chart with the x and the y-intercept. All right, and what did we say the solution would look like on a graph? How do we identify it? It's, intersection. it's the intersection, right. And you're exactly right. That point of intersection does look to be 3, 1. So the solution that we got over here algebraically is the intersection that we got over here graphically. So again, on the homework, they'll typically have you do it both ways so that you can see they're the same. Now, what's the only downside to graphing? Inaccuracy, yeah. If you look at my graph, I mean, I tried diligently to make these little tick marks all the same width, and I used a straight edge to draw my line to try and be really precise, but honestly, I mean, 3, 1 is actually a little bit more over here. So my graph is off a little bit. So that's the biggest problem with graphing is it's just inaccuracy. You know, what if my answer is really supposed to be 2 and 7 eighths 1 instead of 3 1? If my answer is really supposed to be 2 and 7 eighths 1, I'm not going to find that on my graph. Because how am I going to differentiate between 2 and 7 eighths and 2 and 5 sixteenths? I mean, that's such a minuscule little amount. It's going to be hard for me to see that on a graph. So it's also pretty time consuming by the time that I go through making two XY charts and plotting points and that type of thing. So what could alleviate that? Graphing calculator. All right, so grab your graphing calculator if you would. The graphing calculator can help us with our inaccuracy and also with the um, length of time that it takes us to do this. All right, if I'm going to put this system of equations in my graphing calculator, what do I have to do first? Solve them for y, right. So let's go through if I have x plus y is equal to 4 then I'm going to need to solve that for y. So I'm going to subtract the x to the other side. So in y1, I'm going to put in 4 minus x. And then my second equation was x minus y equals 2. So if I solve that for y, I'm going to add the y to both sides and subtract the 2. I'll get y equals x minus 2. So I'm going to put that in y2. So I'm going to go to y equals, and in our first one, we can type in the 4 minus x, and then scroll down to y2 and type in x minus 2. All right, I'm going to start with graphing this on a zoom <coughs> standard. That's the one that's um, tens all the way around. So I'm going to choose zoom number 6. And that gives us a, a pretty good 
picture. It might be easier if I were zoomed in a little bit. So remember the other one we like to use um, a good deal is zoom decimal, zoom number four, because that's the one that it literally counts by tenths, and it's we get nicer, cleaner, neater numbers on that one. And then it's really easy to see that point of intersection right there at 3, 1. Um, also, if it really was something like 2 and 7 eighths 1, I am going to be able to get that accuracy with my calculator because it'll give me like 9 decimal place, 8, 9 decimal place accuracy. So we've done that before. How do I find that point of intersection? Yeah, the intersect button, which is in second calc. So I'm going to go to second trace, which is my calculate menu. I'm going to choose option number five, which is intersect. And when I do, it's going to ask me, um, do you want me to use this for your first curve? And you can see it's already positioned itself on this first curve, and it's telling me I'm using what you've got in Y1. So I'll tell it enter for yes. And then it jumps down to what I've got in Y2 and says, do you want me to use this for your second curve? So I'll tell it enter for yes. And then they want to guess. A lot of us get in the habit of just hitting enter right here where we are. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. Their intention is for you to come up here close to that point of intersection before you hit guess. Um, the only drawback about just hitting guess wherever you are, we are going to get to some of these today where they have more than one point of intersection. If they have two points of intersection, whichever point you're closer to when you hit guess is the answer that it's going to give you. So I'll have students that, type, that keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, and it keeps just giving them that one point, and they can't figure out why. So you have to go position your guess close to the point that you want it to find, and then it will give you as many points of intersection as there are. So guess closest to the one that you want it to find. And so sure enough, it verifies for me that that point of intersection is 3, 1. So just for review, of what we just did. We put both of our equations in y equals and then we graphed and we went to second trace which was our calculate menu chose number five intersect and it said do you want me to use what's in y1 for the first curve? We told it enter. Do you want me to use what's in y2 for the second curve? And we told it enter and then it asked me for a guess. We got as close as we could and hit enter and then it did give me that point of intersection at 3, 1. So that would take care of the time and the inaccuracy problem. 